So I've been wanting to remake this video for a while. I've received a lot of feedback about that it wasn't really the best advice. And while I disagree, I think the ground control system is perfectly capable of holding the vehicle. I think that there was a better way to do this. So to everybody that said they didn't think it was the best, here it is, here's a better way. Um, so what I've done is I have taken just some scrap wood and actually screwed them together and coated them in a little bit of deck correct and made these three step ups for my leveling on a very uneven surface. This driveway slope is eh, somewhere around 3% or a little more as it slopes away from my house for drainage reasons. Uh, and the primary reason, you know, even though the previous video showed these wheels being lifted off the ground, that I think this is not the best thing to do, really comes down to the shackles right here. Is Without supporting the wheels, my shackles were inverting, meaning that this top part was flipping so far down and inverting underneath. And then that was creating a lot of movement between them. And in theory, this could actually end up getting flipped completely around and I could end up with a bigger problem. So that's why I had these made these in my garage just put a little 45 cut on them and then you know screwed them in together obviously all the screws going down so that nothing if it wears would go into the tires and then i can roll up onto it and once i'm up on this top one right here then it's you know pretty close to holding it upright as i level it out so then i'll show you how i do the rest of the system so now you can see i have backed the vehicle up and i'm actually up on the highest point of course, that means that chalking on this side is a lot more difficult. So what I have done, because the slope of this driveway is it's wanting to roll backwards, I actually double rear chalk this. Uh, of course, I still put one in the front, but on the other side, I put two on the other because that's the way it's going to want to settle as I unhitch. Uh, also, you know, anybody is going to have a little bit of transmission shift when you go into park, so you always want to make sure and actually use your parking brake in your truck to get these to stay on top because I mean I don't know about your vehicle but mine could you know potentially roll us back another three inches if I'm not using the parking brake uh, as that transmission has that little bit of slide in it as the pin engages so now we'll go up and take a look overall my front end is high right now it may not be coming across on the video what that means is ultimately when this thing is level my front nose needs to be lower for this to be level. So actually what I'm gonna do is run out a little more stroke than I normally would on the front so that it actually can suck that in and take up that slack. And I'll show you here in just a second what I'm meeting. So now you can see just how much stroke I've run out here in the front. And again, this is because I want the front of this to end up lower and it may seem counterintuitive to run more out, but I've run a good 12 inches out on the front extensions so that way when I'm fully detached from the truck, I can actually get a whole lot lower than I normally would. So that means if you follow the best advice, they generally say about six inches, the width of your hand on a perfectly level that you would run, leave a gap as you run these down. But in this case, I've run it a lot longer, double uh, what would be considered normal because I want this front nose to end up really low so that it'll level out and I won't run out of stroke in the rear when it's trying to level. So now we'll unhitch. Uh, of course, technique on unhitching is that you want to get just a little bit of daylight between the uh, the kingpin there and the hitch. So now I've run this up just enough that you can see the gap there between the plate and the uh, hitch there that uh, we can pull away from it. So I'll undo the brake here and then open up the uh, jaw right there and then we'll pull the truck away and resume the auto leveling. So now I'm fully unhitched and we can actually go through here and just see how extreme we're at in terms of our angle here by uh, just kind of going through and you can see that front to back I'm actually at a two and a half and even pulled up with those pulling up onto those uh, level levelers that I made I'm still at a 1.7 side to side so you can see we've got a fair amount of angle to try and overcome here but I'm going to do it all by just hitting the uh, auto button once I've got my jacks in or my pads in place. So what I've done here is I know that this left rear is going to be my highest one. So I'm using some 4x4s to even support my leveling blocks. And the idea is that as the front lowers some, um, it's actually going to create more gap to the rear. But this way I know I'm absolutely not going to run out of stroke as I go to level this. Uh, and then also for my mid jacks, I've also put in a couple plates for those as well. Uh, but in total, only using uh, 20 blocks to get this level, and I'm not wasting them 
trying to get my wheels up by using these custom wooden ones that I've built here. So now it should be as simple, just kind of knowing the general slope of the driveway to go up and hit auto level. Well, if I can hit it hard enough. There we go. <laughs> so some people are always a little confused that it goes up, even if it needs, it knows it needs to go down. And part of that reason is that the front always has to be higher than the rear for the auto leveling to work. So it kind of does this, I think, to get some sort of position relative to where it's at and then it's going to start dropping and this is where you want to make sure your truck is plenty far away that you're not going to collapse of course i know this tree is a bit in the way here i'm actually going to be concreting this in and moving this tree so i can have a bigger pad on my driveway hopefully that'll be done here in about two weeks and i won't have to worry about this magnolia being right up against here but this is as far over so i've got to have it to still get cars out the garage so you can see it's taken dropping down all that travel that I ran out. And of course I would have ne never been able to unhitch this low. The advantage of hitting auto level at that point too, is that uh, when I press the left and right buttons together, when I'm ready to move, it'll of course take me back to the standard lift height. And you can see that it's essentially eaten up that entire stroke that I had there. I could have run it out even more. And now it's realized I don't have any stroke back, and then I, but I have plenty in the rear because it's going to shoot those out and it's going to start to kind of, in general, lift up this whole left side of the unit. But I'll never have to worry about running out of stroke on this side because of how far I've built that up. And in general, you want to try and run these strokes uh, the least amount possible. Now, this is before on the old video where these shackles would have started to invert right here and these would have definitely been in the air as it raised it up uh, again i don't think that there's anything wrong with the the ground control system can support it but i do agree that inverting the shackles is not the best so you can see here they're going up they're lifting up this side i'm not plugged into shore power right now so it's just doing the, all this off the battery have any of that uh, clanging that happened before as those shackles inverted either. That's going to get relatively happy with it. And you can see that in general it's run about six inches or so. And maybe this one's just a little bit loose there, but that one's definitely not free hanging. Again, my shackles are not inverted or anything like that, so I'm not near as worried about it. And then that's your sound of success right there. It'll never send out the middle ones unless it uh, has achieved a good front to back and left to right balance. And then the right side actually connected first. That's why it stopped. Should have put like two pads more on this side, but the imbalance doesn't matter. It's used to being on, you know, somewhat on level surface. It'll run this one out. Again, if this was perfect, I probably would have taken two more blocks off of there and put them onto here. There we go, engaged. And then it'll kind of go around and check in with itself all the way around. There, it raised up the front a little more as it's zeroing in on where it wants to be. Grounding them all down. And there we go, that little beep up there. And then it even tells you, six, uh, I didn't get to it quick enough, but it'll say success. And then of course our dot will be solid. We won't be flashing here or here anymore, meaning that I'm too far low to the left and too far low to the rear. Um, so that's the way to do it. Uh, I do listen to people's feedback. I do agree this is better than just letting those wheels hang. So that's why I had those made. Um, I'll update the other video, take it down, and uh, hopefully people like this one better.